Hey guys, hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Shitich and on this channel we talk about robotics, research and academia. In today's video, I would like to introduce the new course that I've been designing, codename TT101, Basics of Mobile Robotics. This is the first and introductory video of this lecture series. This is the brief outline of today's lecture. I will tell you about this course, who this is for and what you are going to learn. What is robotics? What is a robot? Why do we need one? What kind of robots exist? What robots will we study as a part of this course? What are the challenges that we are interested in addressing? The learning outcomes and some reference material that you could refer to as a part of this course. First things first, what is TT101? So TT101 is the basics of mobile robotics, which is a course that I'm introducing as a self-paced and on-demand learning for absolute beginners. This is ideal for undergraduate students who are interested in robotics and learning to get to grips with the basics of mobile robots. While there are a variety of robots out there that we are gonna see in just a moment, we are primarily interested in mobile robots as a part of this course. There will be several pop quizzes to get the learners to think and apply the knowledge they are acquiring as a part of this course. And in order to interact with fellow learners, you can use the comment section down below. And there is even a Discord server dedicated for interaction with fellow learners, which you could join. The link to which will be in the description box and also in the channel description. So let's get started. What is robotics? Robotics is an interdisciplinary field which comprises of electrical, mechanical, computer engineering, computer science, signal processing, neuroscience, psychology, mathematics like probability, statistics, set theory, linear algebra, and a lot more. What is a robot then? So while robotics is a field, a robot is defined as a mechanical device that can sense, plan, and act. In the early days, whenever somebody referred to a robot, they normally thought of a particular type of robot, which is a manipulator that we're gonna see in just a moment, typically used in industries. But now we have various kinds of robots and it is a bit challenging to come up with a unified definition for what qualifies as a robot. Yet in an attempt, this is how I would define what a robot is. It could have some sort of intelligence to plan, could be a full-fledged artificial intelligence suite, could be semi-autonomy, could be teleoperation, so you could have a joystick game controller to control it. Um, it could have one or more sensors to sense the environment around it, and then it could have actuators, one or more, to then act based on the information it has acquired from its sensors and the plan that it has made based out of the intelligence that it has. But the question then is, are things like washing machines, microwaves, chatbots, and mobile phones robots too? The fun fact is chatbot has the word bot in it. So does that make it a robot, among other things? This is the first pop quiz that I'm introducing as a part of this lecture series. And throughout this lecture, at various time instances, you're going to find a lot of these pop quizzes. So once you have come up with an answer and you've thought of something, you could go down to the chat comment section below, refer to the pop quiz number. So all of these pop quizzes are numbered and type out your answer. Together with me and the other fellow learners, you would then be able to engage and interact and get some feedback on your thoughts. And the same could also be done in the Discord server in real time. So moving on, why do we need a robot? Simply put, it is meant to make life easy. It is meant to take over mundane and repetitive tasks. So for instance, you might have heard about Roomba, the robot vacuum cleaner by now. Um, and then there are various household robots, one meant to mow the lawn, um, vacuum clean your house, and a whole bunch of other tasks that you could kind of just hand off to your robot that you find mundane, and the robot could just take over those tasks for you. In some settings, you could even split your workload with a robot, which is typical for an industrial setting, and it's more commonly known as cobotics, which is cooperative robotics. So a human and robot work together in unison. 
In fact, during my master thesis, this was one of the applications that I was looking for where you could dismantle a CPU, a computer, a personal computer and remove all the parts and segregate them for recycling to send them off to suitable venues. The problem is the cost of human labor is it adds on to the cost of recycling. So your return on recycling isn't much, but if you could use the robots to speed up the process and reduce the cost of labor, you might be able to get some benefit of actual recycling of the e-waste. Not just this, robots are also useful to reach places where humans can't. Typically, these are referred to as the dirty, dangerous, and dull environments, or the 3Ds for short. These could refer to environments like uh, mines, nuclear disaster cleanup sites, um, subterranean mines, where there is a lack of oxygen and light, and even sometimes some toxic suspended fumes, etc. So um, in places like these, robots come in very handy, aside from other uh, defense applications, such as border patrolling, bomb diffusal, and so on and so forth. Do you still feel that a robot is gonna steal your job? This is a million dollar question and often comes up every time I speak to someone who's interested in robots and there is a lot of chatter around it. Feel free to express your thoughts as to what you think um, where is the future of robotics and where are we headed? So we talked about what is robotics, why do we need a robot, and what could be a generic um, descriptive definition of what a robot is, but what kind of robots exist around us? So the figure that you're seeing on your screen is typically known as a humanoid or humanoid. Basically, this means it's a human-like robot. So you see it has a face, it has two hands, two legs, can even walk sometimes, though it's not ne really necessary for it to be able to walk. Um, sometimes you could just have half of a torso, the upper half of the torso mounted on a pedestal with wheels. So it's semi-humanoid to some extent, but the whole notion of these kind of robots is to have them look similar to a human, hence the name humanoid. Then um, you might have seen these kind of robots. Uh, these are gaining popularity, especially during the pandemic times. These are meant for contactless deliveries. So the, these robotics companies typically tie up with some e-commerce platforms. So once you place an order, your order gets put into these robots, which are then locked with a QR code. Um, so you can scan the QR code with your app when it gets to your door and you can pick the delivery. Um, these are typically very contactless, though their range is a bit limited, but they have a large fleet of these robots. So typically as you could rent an e-scooter these days, um, it's the same concept of operation. These are gaining a lot of popularity in several cities in US. And now recently I learned even in Turkey. Then these are um, marine vehicles, so it could be useful for exploring the marine life, uh, coral reef inspection, um, marine pipeline inspections, and so on and so forth. So it could have a human inside, or the ones we are interested in are unmanned marine vehicles or UMVs for short. Um, this is a drone, needless to say, it is an aerial vehicle, um, has a lot of applications, could be hobby applications for people who are interested in aerial photography and videography. Um, you see a lot of these drone shots, typically DJI drones are the most popular for those kind of things. The one you see on the screen is an AR drone, um, which is used in academic research. It is typically a budget robot um, compatible with ROS, which is the robot operating system, a typical um, software infrastructure used to program and deploy the robots. Um, and yeah, so the, you get some aerial coverage, you could use it as some eye in the sky, you could use them for surveillance drones um, and a lot of other applications. Drones have found a lot of applications typically in uh, search and rescue operations in the urban setting, also known as USAR, urban search and rescue. And last but not least are these industrial robots. So what you see on the screen are various um, end effectors, which are typically the tools attached to the end of the robot. So in this case, you see a gripper. Um, these are used a lot in industry to uh, do a lot of repetitive tasks, especially if you're interested in some high performance car manufacturing sites. If you look up their documentaries and discovery, you're gonna find a lot of these high end manufacturers use these kind of robots. Um, because even the um, fine grain imperfections in the paint coating and so on would actually affect the performance. So they use robots to achieve uh, very high level precision in, in uh, manufacturing process. Also, it speeds up the, the process so the humans don't have to uh, do a lot of heavy lifting, quite literally. 
And they could have a lot of vendor factors. So for instance, if you're using the robot for painting, it could have a spray paint brush. Um, if you're using it for gripping and manipulating things or pick and place of things, it could have a gripper, so on and so forth. So this was just a generic uh, kind of, you know, broad spectrum analysis of what kind of robots exist out there. But as a part of this course, we are only interested in mobile robots. So for instance, for robots like these, which are the industrial um, grippers and manipulators, these platforms are typically fixed base. So as you can see, there is a base at the bottom and the base plate is bolted to the ground, which means they're not going anywhere. Um, technically, they are still mobile because the arm is able to move, but by mobile, we mean the entire base, mobile base of the robot is able to go from point A to point B. So these robots don't qualify. That basically leaves us with um, UGVs, UAVs, and UMVs. Also, please note, we are not gonna cover humanoids either in this process. So what are the challenges that one might come across when dealing with a mobile robot? So a mobile robot typically needs to know the following things. Where am I? Where am I going? How do I go there? Can I trust my sensors? And if so, how much? Is there a certain percentage? Or can I trust them 100%? Can I trust them 0%? Am I doing this alone? Or are there other members in the team to split the workload? So you're collectively trying to accomplish a task. All of these things matter when deploying a mobile robot. As a, as a pop quiz, does life get easy or hard if you have an army of robots, which means if you have a collection of robots, what happens do you think uh, would be your ability to accomplish a certain task? Does it make it easy? Does it make it hard? And to make it even more challenging for you, you could even think about having a collection of robots that are heterogeneous in nature. So your army of robots could be either homogeneous, which means all robots are of the same type. So for instance, if you have a drone, you could think of having N number of drones. But you could also think of a collection of robots that could span ground robot, a couple of aerial robot, a couple of other types of robots. So you have like a heterogeneity in your team. So how would that affect your mission? This is essentially what you're thinking about here. So what are some of the learning outcomes of this course? So by the end of this course, you should get to grips with what are some of the definitive characteristics of a robot, primarily a mobile robot in this case some overview of daily life challenges that a robot needs to deal with when you deploy it out in the field. What goes into sensing, planning and acting for a mobile robot? Because we discussed this is essentially what they are supposed to do. Dealing with noise and sensor uncertainty because uh, I asked you this question, right? So how much can you trust your sensors? Um, and how do you know that a sensor is lying to you in some sense? Um, there is some noise and there's some uncertainty. Um, basically, this is asking the question, how do you know what you don't know, right? Um, probabilistic techniques in robots, which helps in tackling uncertainty. Um, and then a brief introduction to robot operating system, which is the software architecture that is most commonly used in, uh, in academics to program your robots and deploy them. What is beyond the scope of this work is remember that this is an uh, introduction course to mobile robots, which means we are not interested in uh, learning how to design a robot that is very focused on things like mechanical engineering for doing the CAD modelings of the robot, for electrical engineering, for circuit design, for signal processing, for programming microcontrollers. Uh, we are also not going to get into the topics of ethics of AI if you are dealing with some AI modules. Um, as I already mentioned, we are not going to be delving into humanoids and legged locomotion, even if we are interested in mobile robots. So we're going to stick to UGVs, UAVs, and UMVs. Um, also, when we're dealing with these things, uh, so we are not going to get so fixated on the physics of these things. So for instance, how does a UMV plan a path from one point to another? And what if the waves are very strong and so on and so forth? So these are beyond the scope of this work. But we're gonna to get to grips with the basic concepts, right? So the things that we discussed before, so where am I, where am I going? Do I trust my sensors? Do I have team members and so on? And then again, we're not gonna deal with prehensile manipulators and graspers because as I said, those qualify for more of a fixed based uh, manipulators and grasping robots. So that will be beyond the scope of what is covered in this lecture. 
These are just some of the many books out there. The book on the left is on autonomous mobile robots. It's an introductory book. And the book on the right is uh, the one I wrote myself. So it talks about multi-robot exploration and especially in the context of environment monitoring where the robots need to figure out by themselves where they should go, what they should sense. And the unique aspects considered there are the resource constraint perspective, which is a robot cannot be out there in the field forever. It does not necessarily have the possibility to keep recharging itself and it has limitation on the amount of data that it can process. So that's why there is this uh, weighing scale that balances the amount of battery you have to the amount of data you can capture and process in board. So this was a brief overview of this course TT101. Um, thank you for listening, and I will see you next time. In the next lecture, while we build on to the basics of mobile robots, um, be sure to like, share, and subscribe this video with other fellow learners who are interested in learning about mobile robotics, especially those who are in their undergraduate curriculum and are looking to specialize in the aspects of robotics. And be sure to uh, join the Discord server in case if you want to have some active engagement with fellow learners and hit the bell notification so that you're notified as soon as my next lecture goes live. See you next time.